2K Sports, in association with the PGA Tour, is proud to bring you the season-long race for the FedEx Cup. Today's coverage of the Zurich Classic of New Orleans is about to start. I'm Luke Elvey, alongside Rich Beam in the booth, and it's a hello to Henny Koyak, down on the course following our featured group today. Hi, Luke and Rich. Looking forward to following these two players again as they reignite their rivalry. I have a feeling we'll be in for some more exciting golf as these two battle it out. Who delivers when it matters most? That's the joy of any rivalry. And this is a good one to win. Mm, mm, a thing of beauty. Time for the second shot into the first. What a shot! Almost went in the bucket. Putting for birdie here. Well, that's a nice way to start, writing a little red number down on the scorecard at the first. Making birdie in the first always puts you in a good frame of mood. It'll be fun to watch the round progress. Rich, if you missed a birdie opportunity at the first, you've certainly got one here at the second. Yes, yeah, par five. It's pretty much just straight away. you got to avoid those bunkers down the left-hand side. For those players laying up, you got to lay it up shy of the big bunker down the right-hand side. This green sits ever so slightly above the fairway, and again, they're just not that big of targets. It really is a cool golf course designed by Pete Dye. And that's a nice strike. This one should find the fairway. The second hole of TPC Louisiana sets up the first of numerous birdie opportunities. Third shot into this par five to a green that sits above the player, but watch out, missing either right or long, you're in terrible shape. Accuracy with your third is a must. Yeah, nicely played. What are we looking at for this putt, Henny? He's got to be careful this doesn't get away from him here. This is downhill. Surely it's going to. Oh, what a super shot. And now heading over to Harold Varner III. Now, who'd have thought we'd see this? He is behind his rival. Can he do the catching up that's necessary? He's HV3. Oh, what a touch of class. Holds it from the sand. And after that effort, this is how the leaderboard looks. The third hole is a, a long par three measuring 230 yards. Be careful of the wind here. You can't always feel it as those trees on the left sometimes block it out. Missing it right is an obvious no-no, but missing it left is no guaranteed of an up and down either. The green slopes away pretty severely over there.
Yeah, a quality shot from be pleased. 16 feet to the cup. This is their look at birdie. Like the look of this one. Just didn't drop. Just three feet to the cup. And in it goes for the par. And now let's head over to Harold Varner III. He's currently trailing his rival. Let's see what happens here. Oh, that's clutch. What a way to save your par. And now this is why you can never get comfortable, even if you're leading a PGA Tour Pro. This is what they do. They mean business. TPC Louisiana might be known as a birdie fest. However, you're going to find plenty of challenges, including the par 4 fourth. How can bunkers that are so minuscule be so agonizing? That's exactly what these are down the left-hand side of the fourth hole. You avoid those, and you get a good look at the green for your second shot that gently works away from the player. What a drive. Look at that. Sitting at three under par. Chosen the pitching wedge here. They're going with a bit more club here. Let's see if it was the right call. A sensational shot and a chance for a birdie here on the fourth. A putt for a place in the top ten. Oh, that looks like a pure stroke. And he'll move into the top ten. Trailing by a couple of strokes now. Rich the fifth is a shortish par four by today's standards, but still enough there to mess with your ball. Players want to move the tee shot from right to left on this hole because there's some trees on the tee box that'll kind of force you that direction. So driver may not be the play. The second shot, however, that's where it gets interesting. This green absolutely belongs in a skate park. This has more humps and bumps and wobbles in it. It is a very cool design. Quality shot, that one. Second shot here on the fifth. Well, he means business coming out, hitting shots like that against HV3. I think Harold's just as surprised as I am. This part four inside the top five on the leaderboard. If it's up, it could be in. Wonderful shot. Gotta like it. Two in a row. He's feeling it. Wesley Bryan is atop the leaderboard with a one-stroke advantage. The six is a tremendous par four. Plenty of golf hole, this one. 
water all the way down the left hand side so that's going to shove your tee shot out to the right which make that second shot so much longer not much to the screen it's fairly flat but finding it in two well that's a tall order wonderfully played and what are we looking at here henny he's got mm, i'd say a solid 145 here this one's got eyes for the flag stick oh my gosh that's amazing Oh, how handy is that? Move him into top spot. Oh, what a shot that was. Why don't we revisit the magic? Yeah, they were looking at an up and down, but just down. And now heading over to Harold Varner III. He's trying to pull ahead in this group rivalry. Let's see what happens. This has a real chance. Let's catch up with the current proceedings. The leader now has a one-stroke advantage. The seventh provides a great opportunity if you can get a good driveway. This par five is a lovely hole. There are two menacing bunkers on this hole. The far one, the one right in the middle of the fairway, it looks like a zit from the back tee box. That is not the place to be. Oh, absolutely flushed. Time for the second shot here at the seventh. Opting for the five iron. You love watching people play the game when it's like this. It looks so easy. It has been fantastic to watch all week long. This player is dialed in. That's impressive. He just keeps extending his advantage over the field. And now let's head over to Harold Varner III. Birdied their last hole. Here's Harold Varner III. Oh, well hold. Saving one there after being all over the parking lot, chipping in for the par. And let's see what that shot did to the leaderboard. Our current leader is up by three shots. The eighth is a short par four, Rich, and modern players are starting to try to drive this green. They are, although I don't quite see it that way. It's such an easy second shot. If you just lay it up short of those fairway bunkers down the left-hand side, you're not going to have much more than a flip sand wedge, gap wedge maybe, to a green that once again has a lot of movement to it. Time for the second shot at the eighth. close was that to going in the hole great shot just a short putt remaining here you can mark it down that's birdie number four today leading by four strokes after that one the front nine finishes in a unique style a par three of 210 yards length 
This is actually a par three on the card, but most players look at it as a par four because there is nothing simple about this hole. If you bail out to the right, you're going to fall off into a low area where it's nearly impossible to chip it up close without taking a risk. So most players are just resigned to making four and moving on. Well, that's well played and a chance for birdie here at the ninth. And now heading over to Harold Varner III. He's happy, just came off a birdie. Handy effort, that one. A birdie putter waits. And racking up their fifth birdie of the day. Back-to-back -back birdies never hurt, Rich. Kind of like it. He's feeling it. Well, Rich, this is the pivotal final nine coming up, and the players perfectly positioned. They've given themselves a chance. Well, after nine, so far, so good. It's great to see these two players stepping up, getting the best out of the games. It'll be interesting to see exactly who's going to be ahead at the end of the tournament. Oh, that was pure. And now let's head over to Harold Varner III. Now, who'd have thought we'd see this? He is behind his rival. Can he do the catching up that's necessary? Oh, that's great. It just missed the hole. Nicely done. Time for the second shot at the 10th. That one was absolutely lasered. And still in top spot after that hole. Keep it going. Oh, exciting times on the tee of a par five. Looks like they put a good swing on that one. That should find the short stuff. Time for the second shot at the 11th. Well, that's showcasing their power there, Rich. Two big hits there, knocking it on this par five and two. This putt is about eight feet. That's tracking. And down it goes for an eagle. And as we take a look at the standings, this player is currently in first, with Justin Rose second. Well, the 12th is certainly one of the stronger holes on the back nine. This par four measuring just under 500 yards. You want to try and hug the left-hand side as best you can to shorten up the hole as much as you can. 
but still avoid that bunker if at all possible. Second shot, the green up there sits a little bit caddy corner to the players. So working the golf ball in there for left to right for your second shot would be the play. You liked that, didn't you? And now heading over to Harold Varner III. He's currently trailing his rival. Let's see what happens here. Well, that's wonderfully played out of the sand. And Henny, what's he looking at here? Setting up here from about 145 yards. Going with the pitching wedge here. Great looking shot, this. That's a terrific shot and sets up a birdie opportunity here at the 12th. He's currently sitting in first place. Rich, the 13th is a short par four, but a really good one, depending on how much you want to take off. There's really no real reason to go right at the green, Luke, with a tee shot, even if you have the power to get there because you just can't stop it on the green. If anything, you want to hit it out to the right where your next shot is going straight up the green. This is a very flat green, but is perched well above the fairway. It's a wonderful birdie opportunity. That is right down the sprinkler line. Time for the second shot here at the 13th. Ooh, wouldn't that have been nice? Nice recovery there. Great touch. Three feet to go here to the hole. This for back-to-back -back birdies. And now let's head over to Harold Varner III. Now, who'd have thought we'd see this? He is behind his rival. Can he do the catching up that's necessary? Mm -mm. Straight out of the top drawer. Such soft hands. Our current leader is enjoying a six-stroke advantage. Well, for all the opportunities 13 provides you, you don't get too many here at the par 3 14th. It's a beast. As easy of a birdie opportunity as the 13th was, 14, yeah, not so much here. Even though the green is quite large in size, it's difficult to hit with a long iron. Going with the hybrid. He's got this thing dialed in here, looking good. A wonderful shot into 14. It sets up another look at Birdie. Full of confidence as well with their putter. Got to like their chances. This one's for Birdie. What a nice line. Oh, he's on fire today, building upon his lead, hole after hole. And as we take a look at the leaderboard, this player is in top spot, and Justin Rose is second. The 15th is certainly no cakewalk either, a par four measuring just under 500 yards. This is the time where you need to have the best drive of the day. Take it out to the right, avoid the bunkers down the left-hand side. And the green, once again, it's got some movement and a high spot in the front, a low area, and then a high area in the back. When the pin's all the way back, good luck making four. What kind of shot are they facing here, Henny? 
setting up here from about 140 yards. Look at the line on this one. Get in the hole. That's incredible. They've gone and hold another one. Gotta love this. This player is in fuego. What a shot. Let's go ahead and put the old stink eye on another one. Perfect distance, perfectly judged. And look at that. Straight in the hole. And staying right where they were in today's rankings after that. Three holes remaining, Luke. This is getting awfully fun. Well, as we approach the final holes here at TPC Louisiana, the short par 416, Rich, it's a good one, but also a challenging one. Only the brave will take driver out on this short hole. Long irons, hybrids, fairway woods down the left-hand side is just fine. Well, well played. Second shot here on the 16th. That's a high quality recovery shot. Love watching this player around the greens. Just building upon his advantage, he keeps making the important plays. And this from the greenside rough. And now heading over to Harold Varner III. He's currently trailing his rival. Let's see what happens here. It's time to check on the leaderboard. Our current leader is enjoying a 10-shot lead. And I don't know if the rest of the field is up for catching them here today in this final round of action. If you want to win at TPC Louisiana, you've got to hit a couple of very important shots late. The tee shot here at 17, Rich, is one of them. A tee shot that no player likes to face. Water all the way down the left-hand side. The bailout zone out to the right falls away from the green. No fun whatsoever. Oh, that one's straight at the pipe. Oh, what a wonderful shot into the 17th and sets up another putt inside birdie range. Will they be able to get out of this one? They've got to use all the bounce and strength that they can muster. This is terrific shot. Who could have thought you'd hold it? And back to the play, shall we? Well, it's just about three feet away. This for a birdie birdie run. The putt drops and that's back to back birdies. Kind of like it. Two in a row. And after that hole, this player is ahead by a whopping 10 strokes. The closing hole at TPC Louisiana has water all the way down the right, Rich, but that's not its only issue. Bailing out to the left, you'll find some menacing bunkers that you want no part of. However, if you find the fairway, going for it in two will be very tempting. Oh, good drive. That one should find the fairway. From around 220 yards. Looks to be going with a hybrid here. Oh, that 
was so close to going in. Well, that's right out of the top draw. A great shot from our leader. Dare I say, Luke, this player has been in fuego with his approach shots. Another green in regulation. And it's all come down to this. Make this putt and win the event. Looks good. Rich, it's time you and I went down to Bourbon Street because we've just crowned our Zurich Classic in New Orleans champion. Oh, this player taking a big bite out of the big easy with this win at the Zurich Classic of New Orleans. And Henny, it goes without saying that this player dominated their rival today. Yes, Luke, we doubted them, but they got the job done and they took down their hero. The rivalry is theirs and theirs alone. And they can boast about this on social media for, well, weeks now. Well, on behalf of myself, Rich Beam and all the hardworking folks at HB Studios, thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time. <laughs>